Previously, we defined double integrals over a rectangle or over a more general region. In this video, we'll define triple integrals over a rectangular box and over more general regions. We can define the integral of a function f of three variables over a rectangular box in terms of a Riemann sum. We can think of dividing the big rectangular box into a bunch of tiny, smaller rectangular boxes using, say, L subintervals in the x direction, M subintervals in the y direction, and N subintervals in the z direction. We can think of taking a sample point x sub i star from interval subinterval i in the x direction, y sub j star from subinterval j in the y direction, and z sub k star from subinterval k in the z direction. Then the point with coordinates x sub i star, y sub j star, z sub k star will be the coordinates of some little subbox sitting in the middle of our big rectangular box. We can build a Riemann sum by summing over all of these little subboxes. So that's the sum from i equals 1 to l, that's in the x direction, from j equals 1 to m in the y direction, and from k equals 1 to n in the z direction of the function evaluated at the sample point in that little subbox times the volume of the subbox. I'll call the volume of the subbox delta v. Now when we were doing two-dimensional integrals, we thought of the function f as representing the height of a function over a, a subrectangle. And here we can think of this as being the 4d height over our subbox, although it's a little hard to visualize that. That is a way of thinking about what it represents. So you can think of this Riemann sum as representing an approximate four-dimensional volume. Now what I've written here is not quite right. The integral is not equal to this Riemann sum, but it is equal, by definition, to the limit of this Riemann sum as the number of subboxes goes to infinity, in other words, as L, M, and N go to infinity. So this is the Riemann sum definition of a triple integral, but when we go to actually computing triple integrals, we'll rarely use the Riemann sum. Instead, we'll compute them as iterated integrals, just like we did for double integrals. So we'll integrate one variable at a time. Fubini's theorem for triple integrals says that if f is a continuous function over the box b, as described above, then we can compute the integral by first integrating f of x, y, z with respect to z from z equals r to s, those are the bounds for z, and then integrating with respect to y, where y ranges between its bounds of c and d, and then integrating with respect to x, where x ranges between its bounds of a and b. But that's just one way of computing the integral. We could instead integrate in the order dz dx dy, or dx dz dy. In fact, there are six different orders of integration possible. I encourage you to write out all these orders for yourself. One final comment. To tie together the Riemann sum notation and the iterated integral notation, it's helpful to rewrite delta v as delta x times delta y times delta z, where delta x is the width of each subinterval in the x direction, and likewise for delta y and delta z. The delta x, delta y, delta z correspond to the dx, dy, dz below. It's also possible to compute integrals over general regions that are not boxes. For example, let's evaluate this tri triple integral of e to the z over y over this region. We can compute this integral as an iterated integral, integrating in any order that makes sense. To see what order might make sense, let's look at the bounds of integration. Notice that the bounds for y are numbers but the bounds for x include the variable y, and the bounds for z include an expression that contains both the variable x and the variable y. So for that reason, we need to integrate with respect to z first, then with respect to x, and finally with respect to y. 
when we actually integrate with respect to z and plug in the bounds of integration, we'll get rid of our variable z and just have x's and y's. Then when we integrate that in terms of x and plug in its bounds, we'll get rid of the variable x and just have y's and numbers in our expression. And finally, when we integrate with respect to y and plug in bounds, we'll replace all the y's with numbers, so we'll just have a numerical answer. Now that we've set up this integral as an iterated integral, let's do some computation. The integral of e to the z over y with respect to z is going to be just e to the z over y times y, which you can check by taking the derivative of this expression with respect to z and using the chain rule. Now I need to evaluate that between my bounds of integration, and I'll just copy down the rest of the problem. So I'll substitute in my bounds for z and simplify. Next, we need to integrate with respect to x, plug in those bounds of integration, and I'll simplify that. Now the first three terms are easy to integrate, but the last term is going to require integration by parts. So let me find some more space. I'm going to evaluate this first part of my expression. Let's see, that's going to be e over 2 minus a half plus a third minus this integral. Now I'll go ahead and compute the integral using integration by parts over to the side here. So I'm going to let u equal y and dv equal e to the y dy. So then du is dy and v is e to the y. Using the formula for integration by parts, I have u times v, so that's y e to the y, minus the integral of v du, so that's e to the y dy. Of course, these are all evaluated from 0 to 1. So that's going to be y e to the y minus e to the y, and let's see, that simplifies to negative 1. So putting this all together, I get e over 2 minus a half plus a third minus 1, which is e over 2 minus 7 sixths. This completes the computation of this triple integral. This video covered the definition of triple integrals as a limit of Riemann sums. It covered evaluating triple integrals over rectangular boxes as iterated integrals, where you can integrate in any order you like. And it covered triple integrals over general regions, where you have to be more careful about the order of integration.